How are you? How am I? I'm really good. How are you? <laughs> I'm alright, thank you. So before we talk about your latest record, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to jump back a little bit. Yeah. Do you remember the first album you ever bought? Yes. Um, the first album I think I ever bought was um, XO by Elliot Smith. Okay. Yeah. I listened to a lot of records before. My parents are very um, big music fans and, and they played music themselves. Mm. Um, so I, it's hard to think of what I first bought, but Elliot Smith was one of the first artists that I ever obsessed over um, and bought books about. I remember going to Barnes and Noble and buying books about him and learning what all his tattoos were. And so he's he's what I consider like my first own venture into being a music nerd. What was it about him that kind of struck you? Um, I think because he's almost like as close as you can get to the Beatles, but mixed with um, a, a very deep sadness <laughs> that I think I was feeling. And it's different um, now when I listen to him, I don't feel the same as I did um, when I was really, really excited about him. And, and I feel like it's almost similar to like um, The Stranger by Camus or something. It's like, it really hits you at a certain age and it's like the most, exhilarating thing in the world um, at that time and then every other time I'm kind of like Ooh, this is a bit too this is a bit too sad for me right right now because I just feel differently because it's interesting because you mentioned the Beatles and mm. uh, I read that you uh, grew up on the Beatles Brian yeah. Wilson yeah and and your parents played music what, what kind of music did they play themselves they played they met in a band and then they went and started their own band which I think was almost kind of like almost like R&B, okay. kind of hip, kind of hip hop, but like a little bit like they might be giantsy, like definitely really um, different. And then they had me, um, so I think that they just kind of instilled like um, like a real love of music. Like music has always been our way of dealing with life. Um, like still like to this day, like when I hang out with my mom, she's like, I have to show you eight, all eight of these songs. And I'm like, oh my God, I make music all day. I can't listen to eight songs right now, but, um, but it's really cool. It's like how we stay close. It's how we communicate with each other. But so, so I can imagine, did they want you to become a musician? They, I think they just wanted me to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think they didn't, um, I don't think they tried to push me in this direction, but at the same time, like my dad was playing bass for a lot of um, different musicians in the East Village. Mm -hmm. And I remember like taking naps in like studios that he was in or going to um, shows in my neighborhood. Um, and I think that he, he especially, like I, and singing harmonies with him in the car, like he taught me all of that and even how to play bass. I had no um, formal training. So um, it's almost like in a, inadvertently it was like, mm. plus it's like so fun. It was like, I, you know, it's the coolest thing, especially when you're a kid. It's like, well, I'm going to go to this like show and then like go, go to school. Like, that's, <laughs> that's terrible. Did it in a way, because uh, being taken to all these places, did it prepare you for, for what it would involve to be a musician? I think so. I think so. I joined my first band when I was 13 and my bandmate, like basically a girl that I had known from around, she had been in, she had been in a family band and she basically said, I'm starting a band. And I said, okay, I'm in. But I didn't play anything and I didn't sing. It was like, it was my first memory of being four years old on the playground and thinking like, I want to uh, do the Beatles too. It's a conscious thought I had, which is insane. Um, so it's like, it was kind of this like light kind of guiding my life, but no one tells you how to do it. There's no, there's no course um, for indie rock. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's no, um, it's, it's not, um, it's, it's, it's very abstract, you know, it, it can work, it, it, it can't work, it might take years, it might take your whole life, you know, there's, there's no way of knowing how to do it. So, um, yeah, I felt as soon as I have started this, I jumped in and I've, I've never jumped off. Mm. Did you have a backup plan? No. 
that's good. Um, <laughs> Um, but, but so you, yeah, you start playing in your first bands, and I'm going to fast forward yeah. a little bit because then uh, Sunflower Bean comes yep. around. Mm -hmm. What was it about those two guys that kind of made it work? Um, I really admired them. They, we were all friends, and I saw them play twice um, with, a, with just kind of like a guy on bass. And I was just really impressed with um, something about them. Jacob really kind of reminded me of Keith Moon back then. He would like take his shirt off and um, Nick like got on the floor. I remember the first time I saw him and he played Wild Thing, which he's like really embarrassed about now. But he was just a bass player in another band and um, he was this bass player and I knew that he, and he had something he really wanted to do. And I, in the old band that I was in, I was also kind of, um, like not not the main figure so we almost both had this energy of like we really want to do something i really feel like there's more we can do and i saw him get on the floor and i was like he's he's he has something um and they asked me to play with them a few times before i said yes because i was really nervous um because i knew that if we did it it was whether or not it was Good. I just had this feeling that um, I, I was going to go for it full force. And that's a very scary feeling. It's like, it's like falling in love with someone. You're like, oh, no. It's like, this is amazing, but I'm scared. <laughs> so scared of what? Of what might scared of the Scared of the dedication. Mm. Because, um, because you have to have this blind dedication um, and, and sacrifice, I think, to do anything big and, and and just kind of like ignore everything and be like you know I'm not I'm just gonna do this and I believe that we have something and I don't know what that thing is but I'm following that and um, that's just what we've done and that's a it's a it's just like like I think one of the biggest things one of the biggest successes you can find in music is finding people that are as crazy as you <laughs> about doing something and I think Nick and Jacob and I were equally crazy um, in believing that this was what we wanted to do. So I um, just feel really lucky to have found them. So is that where the, the work ethic and the DIY mentality kind of comes from? Just, just that sheer passion? I think so. I think, um, I think it's just who we are. Mm. I think... Um, you know, it's 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 a gift to be able to, to do it. Um, I'm not totally sure where the work ethic comes from. DIY definitely taught us a lot about shows, a lot about playing. Like it, you know, it 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 was where we started. We wouldn't exist without it um, because it made it possible for just a bunch of kids like us to just kind of jump into the deep end. And they're, they're always a learning curve. So uh, now on the second album, mm -hmm. what is one thing you took away from recording the first one that, that kind of uh, stuck with you? So maybe something you learned along, uh, along the way? Yeah. Um, I think that on the first record, we really opened up what the studio um, is. Mm -hmm. Like coming from DIY, all of our songs were built around the li about live, like, you know, headbanging and mm -hmm. jumping into the crowd and loud and everything all the time. Um, so we weren't really thinking about the studio. And on Human Ceremony, we really started that journey. And I think on 22 and Blue, we were able to um, just Go, d go deeper into it. It's like, I think all the tones are really intentional. I think they're all really special um, and dense. And I think that's different than human ceremony. Human ceremony, I think, is, is kind of, it's like, it's fast, it's psychedelic, it's very New York. It's like, kind of has like a youthful urgency. And 22 and Blue, I think, has more of a, kind of like a confident in itself urgency. Am I right in saying that on um, 22 and Blue that you were more v vulnerable? Vulnerable, yes, I think so, definitely, definitely. Do you know where that comes from? What, was it that confidence that you mentioned, does that allow you to be more open? I think, um, 
I think there's a lot of things that have added up to us just feeling like we have nothing to hide or nothing to lose. I think it's a combination of um, the living in the United States being incredibly surreal mm. and also how much we've done. Um, like I said, so since I started that, that first band when I was 13 and now I'm 22, that's almost 10 years of playing shows and learning about what this is and I just don't have any thing to hide. I just yeah. want to be myself and it's hard to find yourself. Um, it's hard to listen to yourself and, um, and, and really seek that out. Yeah. And I think by pulling away all of the chorus and all of the psych and just going into um, what the songs really could be, it helped me find out who I really am and I, and I feel yeah. a lot truer to myself. Yeah.